I have to confess that I'm not awesome at context switching. As an example, last week I was building a custom package and I kept pressing F2 when I was in IntelliJ and I was confused why my variables weren't popping up, right? And for those of you who have built a lot in Automation 360, you know that F2 brings up your variables explorer. So obviously that keyboard shortcut works there, but it doesn't work in other apps. And as far as context switching goes, as an RPA developer, you're probably gonna be working in IntelliJ one day to build a custom package, maybe in Visual Studio Code when you build uh, Python scripts or JavaScript. Maybe you're using Visual Studio when you're looking at a Metabot that you created or a DLL that you want to use within your Automation 360 bot. Because of that kind of context switching, we all know that there are certain keyboard shortcuts that work in all of those applications to allow us to do things more quickly comment out lines of code, execute with debugging, etc. So in this video, I wanna highlight some of the keyboard shortcuts that are most useful for building in Automation 360. Let's take a look. So the reality is, I know we called this video bot building keyboard shortcut secrets. Uh, these are in the documentation. Now, the reason we called them secret was not just clickbait, uh, these are not really well known by a lot of RPA developers and myself included. I didn't know all of these existed until I looked them up. Uh, I had accidentally hit F5 on a bot because I was used to running my code with debugging in Visual Studio and I noticed that the bot executed. So that started me down the rabbit hole of like trying to figure out what other keyboard shortcuts existed and I went to the documentation to find these. So. These are some that I've started using recently. I'm gonna show you each of these in a dummy bot. If you wanna take a screenshot of this to capture these, that's fine too. Um, but like I said, all of these are linked in the documentation below. So the first one that we're gonna look at is search. And search is new as of dot 22. So if you're not on a dot 22 control room, this is gonna look a little bit different for you. But when I hit control F, notice that I have a find in this bot, right? And I can then do a search for anything within that bot. I could do a search for variables. I could do a search for a specific action or a package that I want to reference. So let's just search in like recorder, right? And that's not going to be an exciting search because we've got a ton of those. But I can now flip through and find every reference to where recorder is within my bot. And I'm switched to dual view here so we can see how this looks. Notice that it highlights all of them. Now, Prior to dot 22, this was just like the control F that you see on every other single Google Chrome page, right? Where it's like a in-page find. And it really didn't work within Automation 360. Now it does. So I can flip through this. I can find different variables. I can find different objects. Uh, a great way to be able to find references, especially in a really large bot. This one's not terribly large, but uh, when you're using flow view or when you're trying to find a specific reference to a variable, this is a great way to do it. The next one I wanna show is one that you may or may not know, uh, and that's uh, control copy, and, or control C I should say, and control V, and that's to copy and paste. Now, there's two different ways you can do con uh, copy and paste within Automation 360. So the first one is I can highlight any action or multiple actions and hit con control C, and then I can paste that with control V, and it's gonna put it right under whatever the action I've highlighted is. So I had highlighted this uh, line eight, it pasted them right below that, that works. Now, if I had tried to copy those two and move them to another bot, that does not work. The way that I would do that one is if I highlight two of these and I wanna copy these to use within another bot, I have to click this where it says copy to shared clipboard at the top. And that will allow me to basically copy these to a clipboard that's shared across multiple bots and then I can paste in from there. So the regular control C and control V will only allow you to copy and paste within an actual bot. If I wanna take this action or these steps to another bot, I would need to use this shared copy clipboard. And then obviously I can reference the paste from shared clipboard in that other bot and that would work totally fine. Uh, the next one I wanna talk about is executing a bot. And I mentioned this in the intro here, but if I press F5, that will actually launch my bot. And so that's a little bit easier than me going up and clicking that run every single time. It's gonna kick off my bot execution. Uh, I'm gonna cancel this one after it starts because I don't really need to see this running. Um, but this is a great way to uh, have a shortcut to start running a bot. You press F5, you can immediately kick that off. 
The next one I wanna show is for debugging purposes, and we're gonna talk about two that are related to debugging. One is to set a breakpoint. So let's say I'm looking at line 13 right now. If I press F9, that will toggle a breakpoint for that line. Now, if I just hit F5 immediately after, that breakpoint's not gonna hit, right? Because that's not, I don't have debugging turned on. So another keyboard shortcut I can use here is pressing F10, and F10, will put me in debugging mode. So here I have turned on debugging, and now if I were to press F5 to execute, my bot would run and hit this breakpoint and stop. And that would allow me to do some more investigation onto how variables are being filled or the status of my bot at this particular point. So again, to use debugging, it would be F9 to add a breakpoint. You can also just manually add a breakpoint to any of these as well. Uh, if you click on the three uh, dots here, I think it's ellipses, you can click and select to enable a breakpoint as well. Um, but F9 is the keyboard shortcut to do that. So I'm gonna turn that off, F9 to turn that off, F10 to get out of debug mode. If you're interested in using debug mode, we recently had a video from Laura Argento. I would encourage you to take a look at that one. Uh, she did a great job of digging into how debugging works and how it can be used as you're doing your bot builds. The next one we want to look at is one, again, that I kind of found on accident just by being in the habit of commenting lines out in other applications. Uh, I can do a bulk comment of lines. So if I highlight, let's say, four or five lines here, and I press control forward slash, it will comment those lines out, right? And so I'm basically toggling the comment at that point. And if I press control forward slash again, I can uncomment those lines. And again, I use this kind of functionality quite a bit. Uh, especially when I'm doing a larger bot build or a bot build that actually has like a submission process, right? And hey, I'm testing it and I can't keep submitting new orders or new you know, applications or whatever it is. So I would use commenting out of lines to take on that same kind of functionality. Hey, I want my bot to run. I don't want it to actually do that one submit thing. So I'm gonna comment those lines out so it doesn't keep submitting as I'm doing my testing. Another one we'll look at is one that we actually referenced a little bit in the bot games that we did for August. And if I press Control Shift R, that will start my recorder. And by using my recorder, I can then go through and like, let's say I select a particular uh, application or a specific page. Uh, I could select that and then I could use either the Universal Recorder or the AI Sense Recorder to start recording actions. And like we saw, what happens there is I can start to click on different objects on that application or on that page. Automation Anywhere will record those and turn those into essentially bot code for me that I can then replay, I can modify, I can edit, and um, I can use that to kind of accelerate my bot building. If we've got a web form like the one that was showing up here previously in this example, where there's a ton of different fields to fill out, using the recorder is a great way to quickly go through those because I can just go through, turn on the recorder, click each of these, type something so I know what it is, right? Customer name, customer ID. As I'm doing that with the recorder on, then I can go back through those steps to edit them, to fill in variables, things like that, so that those steps can be a little bit more dynamic. Another one that I found really helpful, uh, again, when I'm like really heads down in bot building, is turning on full screen mode. So right now, if you notice on my list view here on the side, I can see lines one through 21. And for my steps, I've just got like a random, let's say I, I can see one through six. If I press F11, that will actually put me into a full screen mode. Now, this isn't really specific to Automation Anywhere. This is actually specific to Google Chrome. Any Google Chrome page can be put in full screen mode by pressing F11. And notice here that I can see, you know, for flow view, I guess I see one more action that I didn't see before. But in list view, I was only seeing 21 before, now I'm seeing 25. So when I'm really heads down in bot building and I need to really focus on this and I wanna see as much on my screen as possible, I'll go into this full screen mode and that allows me to really get into my code to understand where I'm at. Uh, it allows me to see more in one screen. Obviously another way you can do that for flow view builders like myself is you can zoom out one or two clicks and that allows you to see quite a bit more on a screen as well. So again, F11 to get into full screen mode and F11 to get out of full screen mode. 
The last keyboard shortcut I want to show you is to find a file. So let's go to some place that might make a little bit of sense for this. I'm going to go down to my cleanup step, right? And I'm going to press F3. And F3 is the keyboard shortcut to find a file. Now, here it's asking me to do a search. I'm just going to type in F because I think there's got to be some bots that have an F in it, right? Uh, here's one that says CSV fast. So if I click to add that, it's allowing me to search for files within my control room. And that could be a file that's a bot, like in this case, or it could be a file that is a config file or some other file that I'm storing on my control room, maybe like a, a Word doc template or something like that. I can find those and then reference them. So I found a bot, if I hit add, it's automatically gonna add a task run step pointing to that specific bot. And then I can choose how I wanna do that right now. The bot we chose in this case doesn't have any inputs, so this isn't like the most exciting display in the world, um, but that's how I can reference a file from my control room. A final bonus uh, keyboard shortcut. Right now, I've got my uh, task run uh, action selected for my Imagine CSV fast bot. If I press the space bar, that will close that little details window on the right side. So close, or I should say toggle, right? I can turn that on and off just by clicking spacebar. And again, if I, you know, if for some reason it's up or I clicked on my task and it's not coming up, I can press spacebar. That will bring over that details view that allows me to enter values and things like that. Okay, so again, that's spacebar. So did you learn some new keyboard shortcuts in this video? I hope so. I, I've been learning new ones in the last week or so, uh, and it's helped me to build more quickly and navigate more quickly through this user interface. Are there keyboard shortcuts that we didn't talk about that you're using? If so, let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for checking out this video. My name is Micah Smith. Hopefully you'll like and subscribe for more Automation 360 content. Go be great.